This pack that's like is gonna give you a thermodynamics. Who needs it? It's just full of complicated words, bad questions, and just stuff like that. See, in this video, we're gonna teach you all you need to know about thermodynamics. Somebody call 911. Shoddy fire burning on the dance floor. Whoa! Hello, everybody. Today I'll be telling you about thermochemistry. The first thing you need to know about thermochemistry are the equations. The first one is Hess's Law. This describes the change of enthalpy as a state function. And to find this, you subtract the sum total of the heat deformation of the reactants from the sum total of the heat deformation of the products. The second equation you know is Q law equals Q gain. This describes the conservation of energy. Also, Q equals MC delta T. This allows you to calculate the amount of energy in the reaction. Another concept you'll need to know are heating and cooling curves. So as you can see, energy is being added this whole time, but the temperature of the solution is not increasing at these points because all the energy is being used to melt or boil the solution. Hello everybody, today we will be showing you the combustion of acetylene. We start off with calcium carbide, a solid, and add that into distilled water. This forms acetylene and calcium hydroxide. When you light the acetylene on fire, it reacts with 5 O2s in the air to form carbon dioxide, H2O, and 2600 kilojoules of pure visual pleasure. So there are three basic laws that govern all thermodynamic reactions. Uh, the first one, which is a very common one, is the law of conservation of energy. That's where the uh, energy of the universe is uh, the difference between the energy of the surroundings and the energy of the system, so it's never changing. Plus then you have your second uh, law, which mean is uh, entropy of the universe is always positive, and which entropy is a confusing word for disorder. So it's always above zero and it keeps increasing. It can never, there are reactions that will go down, but it is always going up. And finally, is the third law, which is the most complex. Uh, this is how you assign numerical values to all your um, uh, variables. And so you got your enthalpy here, or entropy here, which is the same thing as Hess's law, but for entropy. And then here are a few examples that will increase entropy. And so as a solid, there's very little disorder, but as you go up to a liquid and then to a gas, more disorder happens between molecules. Uh, also, increasing the number of electrons will uh, increase the possible positions and therefore increase entropy. And then you have increased de delocalization, like in metallic bonds, that will increase entropy as well. Uh, weaker bonds means greater softness and more movability of the uh, combinations of like, the molecules, which will increase en uh, entropy. And then finally, you got chemical complexity. If you increase that, then you also get an increased entropy. Can I try you? Go. Also, with the third law of thermodynamics is uh, my favorite constant that changes every reaction, uh, gives free energy, which can also be defined, defined uh, by the same Hess's law equation, but with the um, gives free energy in there. Uh, there's also a couple other equations you can use, but those will be talked about later. And um, this table here is very helpful. It just shows that uh, with each of the different combinations of entropy, entropy and enthalpy, what gives free energy will be. So if you have a negative enthalpy, that means it'll create heat after it's done, but a positive uh, entropy change, which means increase in, uh, you know, you know, but the, so that means delta G will be negative, which means it's a favorable reaction and it'll be minimal energy left over when you're done. And so as you go down, you get both positive, that means uh, it'll be negative at high temperatures, and then both negative, negative at low temperatures, but as you get a higher temperature, you get a positive. So it's unfavorable at high temperatures, but favorable at low temperatures. And then, but when you have the reverse as the top one, then it's always positive and it never wants to happen. Go. So today I'm gonna be 
showing you an experiment that involves ammonium nitrate in its solid form dissolving in water, which is an endothermic reaction, and so therefore is cold instead of hot. This reaction takes 363.6 kilojoules of mole to occur, so it's taking in energy, absorbing heat from its surroundings, and causing the temperature to drop. So, in here I have some simple water with a piston quality blue dye. Here's our ammonium nitrate. We're going to put these inside each other and watch the temperature drop and observe that by watching what happens with this wooden block. So, put this in there. Put the water down in there. Close it up. Close up your bag. In the meantime, can we hear a nice joke? Yeah. All right. Um, what do you call a sleepwalking nun? I don't know. A Roman Catholic. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. What about why were dinosaurs so big? Why? Because Jurassic times call for Jurassic measures. <laughs> uh, got any good jokes, Paige? You? No. Alright, well, let's hope this works, otherwise we'll all be really embarrassed. Yes. Ready? We told all these. Go. Yay. Yay! So, like, if you actually don't believe us that this is cold, you can see down in the corner there's some condensation. Condensation. Try it, focus on that there, Zach. Ooh, and yeah, chilly. here, feel, feel. Wow. Uh, oh, look. Oh, burr. Perfect. Thermometer. Look at that. Oh, let's see what this bad boy reads. Look at that bad Johnny right there. Oh, it's dropping like. You kind of blocking it here. Yeah. Wow, negative 100 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Science rules. Look, it's going down. It's a oh, 10. It's going down wow, in the DMs. All right. Okay. So, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, equations in volatile fixed free energy and how you can use it to link to other variables. So, the first and easiest one to use is delta G is equal to standard enthalpy minus the temperature times standard entropy. And this can be used to solve for any of the variables in this equation, but usually it's used to solve for and if delta G is less than zero, that's a favorable reaction because it's negative, so more, like less energy is used. If it's equal to zero, it's at equilibrium, and if it's greater than zero, then that's an unfavorable reaction and probably won't be as likely to occur. On the flip side, you can also link Gibbs free energy to equilibrium using standard Gibbs free energy as well as RT ln of Q. But that's less diffused, and what's more common is delta G equals negative RT ln of K. This can only be used when the equation is at equilibrium and can also be used to solve for K. Finally, a link to cell potential and electrochemistry is delta G equals NFB, with F being Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs of mole, and E being standard cell potential, which will be given to you on a sheet. So we have a reaction of zinc and iodide for you, where zinc and iodide have been mashed together with a mortar or pestle, so that you get a zinc iodide solution. And then after water will be added, well you got your zinc iodide solution here in this test tube, but once water is added, the enthalpy change will cause the iodide to sublime into a purple gas. Thank you.
Thermodynamics, there are three basic laws in that theory. govern all reactions that occur. <laughs> but your body sweat goes right in the recipe. Thank you, my help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even starting. Stupid. Alright, so here we have a reaction with zinc and iodide. Hey, nerd. Clog the drain. 